Colleagues, we're going to now move on to the next item of business, which is a debate on motion 23218 in the name of Murdo Fraser on Scottish Government handling of harassment complaints. I would urge all members who wish to contribute in this debate to press their request to speak buttons, and I call on Murdo Fraser to speak to and to move the motion in his name. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, this afternoon, the Scottish Conservatives are dividing our debating time into two parts. Shortly, my colleague Donald Cameron will be leading a debate looking at the crucial issue of the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on our care homes. In advance of that, I am leading this short debate calling on the Scottish Government to publish the legal advice it obtained in relation to the judicial review taken against it by Alex Salmon in connection with its complaints procedure. And I should say at the outset that I regret we are having to spend debating time in this Parliament on such an issue. It has only been made necessary because of the failure of the Scottish Government to respond to consistent calls from members of the committee, speaking unanimously and on a cross-party basis, for publication of vital information that the committee believes is essential to allow us to do our work. This led to the committee convener, Linda Fabiani, stating on the 29th of September that the committee had been completely frustrated by the lack of evidence being provided from the Scottish Government, amongst others. A vital component in this missing information is the legal advice that informed the Scottish Government's decision-making, and specifically its decision to defend the judicial review pursued by Mr Salmon. We know that Mr Salmon had Council's opinion, which said that his prospects of success in that case were substantial. And we know that the Scottish Government conceded the judicial review, admitting that Mr Salmon was correct. And we know that the ward of expenses paid to Mr Salmon over £500,000 of taxpayers' money was at the highest level available in these circumstances, a level of award only made where the defence has been conducted, in the words of Lord Hodge, either unreasonably or incompetently. So we know that something went very far wrong with the Scottish Government's legal case, and we need to understand why this happened and what led to this loss of public funds. It is surely a matter of legitimate public interest to understand this catastrophic failure within the Scottish Government and one which cost the taxpayer so dearly. Presiding officer, there is a long-standing convention that legal advice given to ministers is confidential and that convention exists for good reasons. But that convention can be overridden where there is an overwhelming public interest and I believe that that applies in this particular case. The Scottish Government have themselves published their own legal advice on a number of occasions. In the contaminated blood scandal case, on the Scottish Child Abuse Inquiry, and in relation to the Edinburgh Trams Inquiry. So they have in the past chosen to publish legal advice, and there is no restriction on them doing so. We have had repeated promises from the First Minister and from the Deputy First Minister that the Scottish Government will cooperate with the inquiry. On the 17th of January 2019, Nicola Sturgeon told this Parliament, the inquiries will be able to request whatever material they want, and I undertake today that we will provide whatever material they request. She went on to say, my commitment is that the government and I will cooperate fully with it. If those words mean anything, presiding officer, then the Scottish government should publish the legal advice the committee is seeking. On the 1st of October this year, the First Minister told the Chamber that all the information the Committee had asked for was being provided, except where there was a legal reason why it could not be. That statement is, I'm afraid to say, simply untrue. There is no legal reason why the legal advice we are seeking cannot be published. It is simply a matter of political choice by the First Minister and the Scottish Government. There is nothing in law preventing it from doing so. So why does this matter, presiding officer? Well, we know that the legal stance taken by the Scottish Government led to the loss of the Judicial Review case, and with it, over £500,000 of taxpayers' money paid to Mr Salmon for his legal costs. If it is the case that the legal advice obtained by the Scottish Government, either in-house or externally, from Council, said they had a good case to defend, then lessons need to be learned as to why such poor advice was offered, 
to ensure no repetition in the future. The alternative explanation is much more sinister and concerning because Mr Salmon's allies believe that the legal advice obtained by the Scottish Government told them that the Judicial Review case should not be defended as there was very little chance of success. And if that is indeed what the legal advice said, then it means that a decision was taken at the top of the Scottish Government to go and defend the case regardless, a decision which, in the light of what we now know, was both irresponsible and reckless. More worrying still is the accusation that that decision was made on political grounds, and in effect the Scottish Government were pursuing a vendetta against the former First Minister and using public funds to do so. Now, presiding officer, that claim may well be nonsense, but it is impossible for members of the committee, or indeed the public as a whole, to reach a view on which of these explanations is the correct one in the absence of the legal advice. And that is why its publication is so vital to the inquiry. And it explains why, why all members of the committee, across all five political parties represented in this parliament, have joined together in making the calls for the legal advice to be published. As matters stand, it is hard to avoid the conclusion that, to date, the Scottish Government have treated this inquiry with something close to contempt. In addition to the refusal to release vital information, we have now had an astonishing four occasions on which senior civil servants have come to the committee and given oral evidence, and then have had to write to the committee subsequently to correct misleading statements which have been given in a public session. That is simply not good enough. Presiding officer, it is essential to the work of the committee that the legal advice is made available to us. I hope that the Scottish Parliament will agree today to support my call for its publication. And if we are successful in winning the vote later this afternoon, I would expect the Scottish Government to respect the parliamentary vote and produce the missing documentation as a matter of urgency, and in so doing, fulfil all the promises that have been made by the First Minister and the Deputy First Minister to be open and cooperative with this inquiry. To do otherwise, Presiding Officer, would be unforgivable. I move the motion in my name.